Hello there and welcome to Wandering Mind. In this video we'll be talking about uh, Kenzuk. Now Kenzuk is an EU-like union of Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom. Now this includes increased trade, foreign policy and, and military cooperation along with the mobility of citizens between these four states. Now, this idea has gained a lot of traction in the post-Brexit world as both Britain and other nations seek to strengthen economic ties. Senator James Peterson from Victoria recently spoke about it in the Australian Senate as well, and that's got a lot of people thinking about this idea, particularly in Melbourne. But to take a look at how this idea came into being, we need to head back to 1967. In this year, New Zealand historian W.D. McIntyre first mentioned this term and idea in his book, Colonies into the Commonwealth. A bit of context, 1967, as most of you know, was a far more racist time across, across the world with the white Australia policy in full swing and apartheid in its heyday. Many feared that a need of labour in Australia, New Zealand and Canada would lead to increased immigration from uh, non-European nations. At the same time, uh, Britain and its empire had very clearly lost its position as the world's uh, superpower after granting India its independence and the disaster that was the Suez Crisis. So Kanzuk, in essence, was meant to preserve the cultural and racial identity of Britain and its settler colonies, while giving this bloc more soft and hard power in an attempt to reclaim that position as a world superpower that was lost by Britain. This idea was revived again and popularised by James Skinner, the CEO of Kanzuk International who campaigned for it amongst Canadian government officials. Here he is with the Member of Parliament, Aaron O'Toole, campaigning for it. James was born in South Wales and lives in Vancouver now, but has also worked in Canberra and Melbourne, which might explain why he is so passionate about this issue. According to Kensic International, the idea of a Kensic Union enjoys high approval ratings, 76% in Canada, 68% in the UK, 73% in Australia, and 82% in New Zealand. Now, uh, an interesting thing I noticed while uh, looking at these numbers was that um, the larger the economy of your country or the population of your country gets, the lower your approval rating for these things. Well, this might be because um, people in larger economies might feel that they are militarily and economically more self-reliant and thus being in a union such as this may not present any benefits and may cause other economies to be relying on them for things like defence, which in the days of the British Empire, Britain was expected to provide. This movement has many notable uh, backers and sympathisers such as the former Prime Ministers of Australia, John Howard, the British-born Prime Minister Tony Abbott, Prime Minister of the UK Boris Johnson, former Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper uh, and the former Canadian uh, Conservative leader Andrew Scheer. However, the critics of this idea say that Keynes is just a fantasy and that the project would not make any sense as a geopolitical construct in the 21st century because of the gradual separation that has occurred between each of these states in both legal and political cultures since the end of the empire. When asked about Kenzuk becoming a reality in the post-Brexit world, former Australian Prime Minister Kevin Rudd stated that much as any Australian Canadian and New Zealand governments of whichever persuasion would do whatever they could to frame new trade agreements with the UK. The bottom line is that 65 million of us do not come within a bull's roar of Britain's adjacent market of 450 million Europeans. 
what he basically meant was that no matter how many free trade agreements are signed between the UK and other kinds of nations, they will never be able to have the same economic partnership the UK has enjoyed with the EU. Also to note that these countries don't trade all that too much, with the exception of Australia and New Zealand. For example, Canada trades more with the US than the UK, New Zealand and Australia combined. And the UK trades more with the rest of the EU than the other three Kansas nations combined. And the same with Australia, which trades far more with China than the UK and Canada combined. Now, the question we might ask at this time is, will it become a reality? Personally, I would love the idea of being able to live in the other Kansas nations, but there are several very strong arguments against the idea. Therefore, I highly doubt this would become reality in the near future unless we see some significant changes in the economies and foreign outlooks of these nations. And that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.